my lovelies welcome back to my channel for those of you guys that are new welcome my name is pinky and teaching you witchcraft and tarot is what i do for those of you guys returning welcome back my loves here we are doing the monthly readings i do want to give you guys a quick shout out for those of you guys that have reached out those of you guys that have connected with us on other social media platforms like instagram and snapchat thank you guys so much for your love i truly appreciate that if you don't know, um, you can follow me on my other social medias. All of that you're going to be able to find on the description box below. If you guys are interested in personal consultations, any type of spell work, or any of our manifestation books or journaling or shadow books, you can find all of that on the description box below. All right, my lovelies, we're going to kick off the monthly readings. This is going to be for Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Before we get into your reading, Aries, as I've done with the rest of the signs, we're going to go through um, astrological events and what we are experiencing right now. As you guys know, we have Taurus, um, or sorry, we have Venus in Taurus as well as the sun. So a lot of opportunities for growth and advancement. This is for every single one, depending on where you have your Taurus placement. You can expect major um, expansion, growth and opportunities coming your way. Now, we also experienced, obviously, you guys are aware of the solar um of eclipse season right and the solar eclipse that we just recently experienced hopefully uh it's been more kind to you guys than it's been to our family um but yeah so eclipses are major transformational type of energies these are portals these are um basically being nudged or pushed towards our destiny right what our purpose is we also had a lot of momentum going on with Aries, as that is where we experienced the last solar eclipse, Aries. And we also have the North Node in your sign. So for a lot of you guys, it's not just expansion, it's not just change, but it's also transformation. You guys are being pushed or pulled towards your destiny, towards what you're meant to be doing. We have the South Node in Aries, uh, sorry, South Node in, um, in Libra. So it is about creating or being able to balance off, right, certain energies in our life, whatever it is that you're currently struggling with, wherever area of your life you're currently struggling in um, or have experienced a bit of resistance in the past, that's not, no longer going to be the case, but we are being pushed and propelled um, to move towards our destiny, to move towards purpose. So, and then we're also going to, the massive transit of pluto right pluto went into aquarius um it's been doing this dance with aquarius and with capricorn it is now retrograde and it's going to be there retrograde uh until i believe sometime in september if i'm not mistaken it's going to dip back into capricorn uh, at the final degrees of Capricorn before going back into Aquarius and finally stationing there. So wherever you have your Aquarius placement in your chart, I highly encourage you guys to look at that because that's what's going to be transformed, right? Wherever Pluto goes, it is bringing about major transformation. Um, it does bring... Um, the death of something right the death of a cycle the death of it could be metaphorical or it could be physical through this process we may experience uh, the loss of you know of loved ones um as it did for me uh for others of you it's just transforming whatever you thought was secure or whatever you thought that was stable in that house that you have aquarius it's going to completely transform it because it is, you know, Pluto is the planet that is all about transformation, massive transformation. And it is also a generational planet. So what does that mean? That means that it's going to progressively, uh, as time progresses, it will progressively continue to push you uh, to expand, to grow, to obviously end certain cycles, certain people, certain situations. Um, but through this process, uh, which is going to be stationed in Aquarius for the next 15 years, so you may not see these major changes um, quickly, just depending on what degrees you have Aquarius placement in, but you will most definitely be transforming that house, meaning that placement where Aquarius is at. So highly encourage you guys to look at your birth chart so that you can see what you can expect. 
um, what is transforming with Pluto's energy, right? And it is the planet that rules Scorpio, and it is all to do with the dark themes of life, right? Death, transformation, um, transmutation. But also one thing that a lot of people forget to mention, right? Uh, a lot of people fear Pluto like Saturn. <laughs> but the beauty in um, Pluto is that Pluto always brings to you power and wealth. So again, depending on the house that it's placed at, where your Aquarius is at, that's where you can expect the most massive transformation that's going to be unfolding for these coming 15 years. And we're already seeing that, you guys. I'm sure you've seen um, in celebrity culture, you have, you know, the dark side of Capricorn is, you know, getting power at the cost or expense of others. And we are already seeing because Pluto had been in Capricorn for the past 20 years. So people that were in power, people that were abusing their power because it's moved into Aquarius and Aquarius does rule over the best of everyone, meaning it's to the best interest of everyone. It's the collective. It's like we come together and what benefits the collective. It's not just about, about you know, me or I am. It's uh, more to do with the collective, with everyone. So we're already seeing that play out, like I said, in celebrity culture. We have people going in and out of jail. Uh, they're basically, you know, their laundry is being dragged out <laughs> in plain sight and people hearing about, you know, people in abusing their power having to pay the consequences of that. So again, we're already seeing that um, when... Pluto entered Aquarius, we started to experience, you know, the rallying, the protesting that is happening in the colleges right now, etc. So it, these are themes that are going to be playing out massively. I can honestly tell you guys that um, that of celebrity, you know, culture or those that are in very high positions, high ranks or, you know, powerful um, because Pluto is in Aquarius uh, and it's going to be there for the next 15 years, we're definitely going to be seeing the downfall of many, you know, actors, actresses, singers, whatever, uh, people in power. Um, because again, Pluto being in Aquarius, it's we go from, you know, Pluto being in Capricorn, which is that of like getting people so hyped or so big that it almost seems untouchable. And, you know, for the past 20 years, we've been experiencing that as an example is like celebrities um, becoming so great that they be, they think they become untouchable. And now that it's moved, now that Pluto has moved into Aquarius, it's like people are waking up. You're realizing you're stepping into your power. You're realizing, you know what? Those people are in those positions because we've allowed them, because we've put them there. So now it's about if it's not, you know, appreciative type of energy or if they're not doing anything that's going to benefit us or if we feel like whatever it is that they're doing, that they're posting, that they are advertising, if it doesn't feel, if you don't feel connected to them uh, in a humanitarian way, those are the people that are going to start to experience a downfall in their fame. And it's because think of it as Pluto being in Aquarius now, we're going into the era of the underdogs c coming on top. Um, and again, it's because of the collective. It's because who, what are we doing? What are we bringing to the table? What are we benefiting? Um, not just for ourselves, but for everyone else collectively. So again, we're going to be seeing all of this play out. We're already seeing that, like I said. Um, but yeah, Aries, you're one of the signs that is a cardinal sign. So this uh, solar eclipse was massive for you guys. And eclipses is not just the ad eclipse season but it also affects us for the next coming six to even nine months or even a year um so you guys are going through massive transformation we had chiron in your sign as well aries so a lot of wounds a lot of you know childhood wounds that are coming up you may not be going through the same thing that you went through in early childhood but you are definitely being confronted with the feelings of those wounds from childhood so it's almost like we're being forced to address uh certain things that we've been carrying that need healing that we need to heal so as an example for some of you guys if relationships was something that was very chaotic or destructive in your early childhood 
um, whether it was, uh, you know, childhood traumas or how you were taught to love. Now you're, you may experience themes that come up in your life where you're realizing, you know what, this is what I thought I always wanted, or this is what I thought I never wanted in relationships, but here I am kind of following a pattern or perhaps following my mother's footsteps or probably following my father's footsteps when, when back then I never, like I wanted to do the opposite of that. And, and you're kind of like acknowledging that and realizing it's okay to change my mind. It's okay to outgrow that. It's okay to realize that a lot of my rebelling, a lot had not to do with myself, but the fears that stem from that experience in early childhood. So again, a lot of massive transformation here. Um, obviously, the solar eclipse was there. We also had Mars in your sign. A lot of you guys may be feeling like work is picking up or like things are getting um, a lot of momentum is picking up here for you guys. And again, like I said, eclipses are not just eclipse season. It affects us for the next coming six to nine months, even going up to a year. So for a lot of you guys, you're going to be experiencing this depending where you have your Aries, whether it's Sun, Moon, Rising, or Venus. Uh, there is definitely healing that's happening as well as gaining momentum, gaining power. And like I mentioned to you guys, we also have Pluto in retrograde. So unlike Mercury or Mars being in retrograde, it actually is beneficial when Pluto is in retrograde because we're kind of looking to the past or to our past experiences wherever we felt like we were disempowered or like things were kind of out of our control when it goes retrograde because it is a generational planet it moves very very slow when it's in retrograde it's almost like we're being able to see what we've overcame or what we're dealing with right now from a better perspective because you've gained that experience or that knowledge it gives you it basically brings your power back so for a lot of you guys you're feeling more empowered you're feeling um, like I said, whatever area in your life you're currently struggling, you're definitely feeling like things are starting to look up for you because there's not so much pressure and you're also releasing. And by releasing, it's almost like think of it as what I tell my clients when Pluto um, is going through this transit, it becomes the phoenix that rises from the ashes. So again, a lot of you guys are experiencing feeling more empowered. Like I said, uh, work may be picking up. The pace may be picking up. <coughs> so a lot of changes that are happening here for you guys. But we're going to see what you guys can expect for this month. Sorry for the long intro, but I did find that it was very important for you guys to know exactly what's going on astrologically so that you can make sense of the craziness that you may be experiencing. So let's get into your reading, Aries. I call upon all my wise and loving spirit guides, spirits of light and love, my ascendant master, spirits of divination. Please step forward. Allow me to see, hear, sense, feel, and receive the messages loud and clearly. Please speak to us in regards to Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for the month of May 2024. Let's see what they can expect. What changes are coming to my lovely Aries? So Aries, just remember, if you are, we have cards flying out already, if you are feeling like things are a bit chaotic, be patient with yourself because it is a lot of transformative energy as well as a lot of empowerment coming your way. All right, Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for the month of May 2024. Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for the month of May 2024. Okay, one more shuffle. Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Okay, here we go, Aries. So we're starting off here with the Chariot. We have the Nine of Swords, the Ace of Cups, the King of Pentacles, the Lovers, and the Nine of Wands. Okay, so we go back to the same conversation that I was having with you guys in the very beginning. We had Chiron in your sign, Aries. So there's a lot of healing that's happening right now. For some of you guys, it's confronting certain anxieties, certain um, things that really have you on edge, whether it's relationships or partnerships, or whether it's the relationships and connections that you have with those around you. With the chariot, it is empowerment or becoming empowered because you're being able to pinpoint or you're being able to fully see exactly 
what are your trigger points? So you could have experienced uh, perhaps the past week, week and a half, you probably could have experienced being triggered. And I feel like for a lot of you guys, there was a bit of self-reflection, like why am I being triggered? Why am I becoming very aggressive or defensive? And it's because it has a lot to do with the connection of either those around you or when it comes to relationships and partnerships. Now, with the King of Pentacles and the Lover's Card and Nine of Wands, um, they're showing me that there is a new beginning, a new cycle that's coming in for you guys, especially with the Ace of Cups here regarding relationships. So for a lot of you guys, it's questioning, um, have you been running away from connections uh, or do you have a tendency of being attracted or being pulled or drawn to people that are emotionally unavailable? Are you the type to know that you are giving too much of your power away when it comes to relationships? This is these are themes that are going to be that you're going to be experiencing for this month of May, Aries. And I would highly encourage you guys to really go deep when those triggers start to come up, because I really want you guys to tap into, you know, it's almost like you're going through a healing aspect of yourself. You're stepping into a higher version of yourself. But before we're able to do that, we kind of have to self-reflect and understand. I see for some of you guys, you have a tendency of running away. So this could be that you either have a tendency of attracting people that are very emotionally unavailable, or you have a tendency of running away whenever you feel love or whenever you feel like you're falling for someone or you're getting emotionally invested in someone. And this is stemming from fear. This has to do more so from fear. Perhaps for some of you guys, you've convinced yourself that this is a, a way of living or maybe this is how you've wanted to live your life up until now. But, th but I feel like in the month of May, you're going to be realizing that aspect of yourself of coming off as a rebel or coming off as it's my way or the highway type of thing. It's not so much about you being a rebel. It has more to do with your defense mechanism kicking in because you could have experienced pain and trauma in the past and you just chose you didn't want to go through that anymore. So again, there's a lot of self-reflection that's happening. There's a lot of healing that's happening. It's okay for you guys to change your mind. And this is connecting very much with the Aquarius energy that I did. Uh, energy reading that I made, sorry, uh, where they were speaking about it's okay to change your mind. It's okay to want something different. That is part of growing. That's part of evolving. Um, because I am seeing for a lot of you guys, I feel like you're going to be changing your mind either about relationships and how you deal with relationships or the people and partners that you choose when it comes to relationships or for others of you, relationships with those around you. Um, it's almost like you're stepping into your authentic era. You're being honest and transparent about things. And I'm going to be honest for a lot of you guys, especially those of you guys that are carrying a lot of past traumas when it comes to relationships and partnerships. I feel like there is a healing aspect that's happening. And for a lot of you guys, you're getting ready to open up. And when I say open up, I don't mean this on a superficial level. I mean, in the aspect of genuinely being open to a feeling that is growing for some of you guys, it could have been a connection, it could have been someone you were dealing with that you felt the moment you started to have some type of feelings for this person, you could have uh, your defense mechanism could have kicked in and you started to either keep them at arm's length or you ran away from the situation or you kind of self-sabotage this connection and it's because it was out of fear. So again, I feel like you are realizing that in the month of May and you're coming in strong, meaning you're, you're taking your power back and you're also realizing if this is what you want and this is, you know, something that you're feeling and you can't help, I see you guys giving into this connection. Now, for others of you, it could be quite the opposite. It's that you are realizing I am no longer chasing the person that doesn't want to be chased. I'm not keeping the person that doesn't want to be kept. I'm choosing myself and I'm loving myself unconditionally that I know what I deserve and I'm going to keep it pushing. I'm going to walk away from this because I'm no longer wasting my time. Again, Chiron in your sign, the, the wounded healer. So you're healing from those aspects of you um, that need healing, but also that almost have become a defensive mechanism. Um, 
And I see you guys choosing yourselves or choosing your peace or choosing love. Okay, so it can play out in different ways for a lot of you guys, but there is definitely a lot of healing that's happening here. And especially those of you guys, I'm hearing very strongly for those of you guys that do have or have had a fear of opening up. I feel like there's a person, could be Earth Energy, Taurus, Virgo, uh, Capricorn. For others of you, it could be a Cancer or a Gemini. But I'm seeing you guys kind of being scared you could have pulled away. But I see you guys finally realizing in the month of May um, that it's worth the shot, that it's worth the fight, that it's worth you feeling than not feeling at all. And I see you guys actually like being stumped for a bit, but then realizing, you know what, I'm going to embrace this. And by doing this, you're bringing your walls down, Aries, and I assure you that that energy is going to be reciprocated, okay? <laughs> All right, my loves, I hope you guys enjoyed these readings. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, and I will see you guys soon. Till then, bye.